movie story recaps here. Today I will show you a drama, romance film from 2015, The Lobster. In a dystopian near future, it is against the law to not have a partner. Single people are sent to a hotel where they are given 45 days to find a suitable mate they share superficial traits with such as minor diseases or problems, which they believe to be the key to compatibility. If they don't find love before the 45 days time is over, they will be transformed into an animal of their choice. Single guests may gain extra days by capturing single outcasts known as loners in the woods, and matched pairs are sent on a 15-day vacation trial as their final test. If they start having trouble with their relationship, they're given children to raise, since the belief is that children can solve all of a couple's problems. The story begins with David, who is an architect that must leave his house after his wife leaves him after 12 years for another man. Without shedding a single tear, he's taken to the hotel, where he's allowed to keep his dog because it used to be his brother, but he is denied to choose bisexuality as an option. He expresses interest in finding a female partner before they take all of his personal belongings and send him to a single room where a tranquilizer gun, darts, and a set of bland clothes are waiting for him already. His room also has a window that lets him see guests coming back from hunts and all the sleeping bodies of the captured loners. The hotel manager visits him to welcome him and asks him what animal he'd like to be turned into if he doesn't make it. He chooses a lobster for the reason that they live for over a hundred years, stay fertile for the rest of their lives, and have blue blood like aristocrats. The manager congratulates him on his original choice because most people choose a dog, then she orders the servants to tie one of his hands to his belt for 24 hours so he can learn how much easier life can be when there are two of everything instead of one. The hotel has many rules. Single people can use the single player sports facilities, like golf, but only couples are allowed to play tennis. The staff provides them with haircuts and clothes, which don't come in half sizes. The dog isn't allowed to leave the room, smoking isn't allowed because they need good lungs to hunt loners and a nice breath to kiss. The dining rooms have separate areas for single people and couples, and single guests aren't allowed to share a table for breakfast. Touching themselves is absolutely forbidden as well, but stimulation from the maids is mandatory. During his first breakfast at the hotel, David makes friends with Robert, who has a lisp, and John, who has problem walking because of a limp, and together they go for a walk before they are asked to introduce themselves to the group by telling their names and their defining characteristic, David's is short-sighted. Later in the evening, they attend a dinner party where the manager provides the music together with her husband. David shares a dance with a woman that nosebleeds easily, he dances with a woman everyone considers heartless and has the hunting record of 192 captives, and John chooses a woman who is obsessed with biscuits, but none of them manage to make a connection. After the party is over, the guests are taken to the forest to hunt loners. Most guests have no issues shooting the outcasts, especially the heartless woman, but David can't bring himself to do it, so when the hunt is over, he doesn't get any extra days. Days start passing quickly, and David gets used to the hotel's routine. Guests are obliged to watch little propaganda demonstrations about the advantages of relationships with absurd examples like single people choking on their food if they don't have a partner to help them, or single women getting abused if there isn't a man by their side. A maid comes to his room regularly to sit on his lap and stimulate him until he's hard, which is an activity David doesn't really enjoy because they aren't allowed to finish, so it's only teasing torture. Robert is bothered by this as well and touches himself in private, but when the manager finds out, she burns his hand with a toaster. David spends the mornings frustrated because he can't reach certain spots on his back to rub bomb on, and the evenings drinking and chatting with Robert and John, discussing new guests and the procedure that transforms people into animals. One day, on their way to the hunt, Biscuit Woman gives David some treats for his dog and comes on to him, but he only gives her one-word answers, even when she says that she'll kill herself if she doesn't find a partner when her time is over. Some days later, during shooting practice, Robert asks David and John what animals they've chosen, saying he wants to be a parrot and perhaps it would be cool if they all chose parrots so they could hang out after the transformation. John insults him and his idea, angering Robert and causing him to jump on him to start a fight, but David separates them. John comes up with a plan, he hits his nose on purpose to make it bleed before talking to nosebleed woman, this helps her establish a connection with her. Later on, David tells John he knows he's lying, but John says, being hunted in the forest or becoming an animal would be worse, and David agrees. The plan works out well, John and Nosebleed Woman are accepted as a couple and sent to a double room. David only has seven days left and chats with Pretty Hair Woman, who is on her last day. Her best friend, Nosebleed Woman, comes to say her goodbyes by reading a heartfelt letter to her, but Pretty Hair Woman's only response is to slap her before choosing to watch a movie for her last activity as a human. 
Sometime later, David looks through the window while hearing Biscuit Woman's flirting messages on the machine, and he finds out Pretty Hair Woman has become a pony. While playing golf, David realizes pretending to have feelings is harder than pretending not to, he also remembers always having liked accents and short hair, so he decides to follow John's idea and try to connect with Heartless Woman by lying. One afternoon, after Biscuit Woman tries to kill herself by jumping off a window, he takes the chance and approaches Heartless Woman to tell her she hopes Biscuit Woman dies quickly so he can have some peace and quiet. Heartless Woman responds by telling him they can talk at another time. A couple of hours later, David joins her in the jacuzzi where Heartless Woman pretends to choke on her martini. David doesn't help her and this convinces her he's as heartless as she is so they agree they're each other's match. The hotel manager declares them a couple and gives them a double room to spend 15 days before they're sent on a yacht trip. They start spending time together and sometimes it works, like when they meet John's daughter and David kicks her leg so she can have a limp like her dad, but most of the time it's awkward. One morning, David is woken up by heartless woman telling him she's kicked his brother to death. At first, David pretends it doesn't matter, but he breaks down as soon as he enters the bathroom and sees the dog's body. Heartless Woman finds him crying and slaps him for lying, revealing she kicked the dog on purpose because she had been suspicious of his plan. Since relationships can't be built on lies, she decides they must tell the manager about this so he can be punished by being transformed into an animal nobody wants to be. David is dragged through the hotel hallways, but as soon as he gets the chance, he hits Heartless Woman and runs away. She immediately starts jazzing after him, only to be misdirected by a maid who has hidden David in a room. Using a tranquilizer gun from that room, he comes out and shoots Heartless Woman before dragging her unconscious body away with the help of the maid, who tells David to shoot her as well, so they won't suspect her. David does so before taking Heartless Woman into the transformation room to transform her into an animal, which is a better option than killing her or torturing her while she's sleeping and unable to feel the pain. Afterward, David escapes the hotel and runs into the forest where, after a night spent alone, he's found by a group of loners. The leader allows him to join them and gives him a hug, but she also tells him of a very important rule, romantic or intimate relations between loners are not permitted and those who try will be punished. Conversation is allowed as long as there isn't any flirting, and this also applies to their dance nights where they play electronic music on their discs and dance by themselves. A man with a bandaged mouth gives him some supplies, and when David asks another loner what happened to him, he learns what the punishment for flirting is, they cut their lips with a razor and make them kiss, they call it the red kiss. There's also another form of punishment called the red intercourse, but the loners, David starts a new routine of life in the woods. They train in the forest to run and hide from hunters, like when one of the loners accidentally steps on a bear trap and is left alone to free himself. But David hasn't started to work on his own grave yet. He's also been noticed by a fellow female loner that is as short-sighted as he is and hides her attraction to him. One day, the hotel's bus comes over to hunt and David is found by Robert, who intends to capture him because he only has two days left. David distracts him by saying he's his best friend and that he thinks of him often. This allows short-sighted woman to sneak from behind and stab Robert in the leg. As soon as he falls down, David takes his tranquilizer gun and shoots him to knock him out. The short-sighted woman makes him promise he won't tell anyone that she's helped him and that he'll repay her later by hunting a rabbit for her, David agrees before taking Robert's clothes and guns with him. Meanwhile, the loner's leader meets the hotel maid, who has been a mole for them all this time and has brought a gun and keys for the double rooms at the hotel. She suggests using the items on Saturday because everyone will be tired after the dance and many staff members get the night off, then informs the leader that she'll be quitting her job because she can't stand her dentist husband anymore. The leader tells her she's allowed to join them after this mission and that she can just find another mole later. David catches two rabbits and leaves them for short-sighted woman as promised. The next day, the leader, a loner man, short-sighted woman and David change into nice clothes and go into the city, pretending they are two couples. They visit a shopping mall where they buy supplies and enjoy some food, managing to convince the cop that they're a couple without having to show him their marriage certificates. They leave them all holding hands and as they chit-chat, David learns she is also short-sighted. Afterward, the leader takes them to visit her parents. They all have to pretend to be co-workers and in good relationships to keep the parents off the leader's back. David's speech about his happiness with short-sighted woman is quite intense to be just acting, but they all eat it up. When they're leaving the city, the leader even congratulates him for doing great on his first day. After bonding with short-sighted woman over their eye problem stories and having her rub bomb on his back, David joins the group of loners that will sabotage the work of the hotel. Each loner is assigned a room to break into, and David chooses the yacht. 
they make it to the hotel after changing into their nice clothes, and David shoots the guards with Robert's gun to knock them out so he can steal a boat unnoticed. He rides that boat to the yacht to find John and his wife having dinner with their daughter, he interrupts them to tell nose-bleeding woman that John has been lying about his own nosebleeds and that they aren't suited for each other. She slaps David for it, but he isn't phased, he only leaves after the daughter asks her mom to stab him, and John kicks him out. In the meantime, the leader and two other loners break into the manager's room and tie her to a chair, while the leader points a gun at her husband. When she asks whom they should kill and who would live on their own better, the husband replies, he should be the one to survive because he's used to being alone while his wife works. The leader gives him the gun and tells him to shoot the manager, but when the husband pulls the trigger, nothing happens. It was all a ruse to ruin their relationship. Later that night, the loners celebrate by dancing while listening to music on their discs, and we can see the maid has finally joined them. The leader approaches David and reminds him he needs to dig his grave because nobody will do it for him when he dies. The next day, while chatting with a girl, he sees a loner man bring a rabbit to short-sighted woman, causing David to get jealous. After telling her she doesn't need to take rabbits from anyone else because he'll catch them for her, he goes to see the man and harasses him to know if he's short-sighted too. When the man denies it, David grabs his face and checks for contact lenses but finds nothing. The man had been telling the truth. David and the short-sighted woman start having a secret relationship, breaking all kinds of rules. They dance together, they kiss and have intimacy, and they even develop a gestural language they use to communicate in front of the others. After a few weeks, they are able to have full conversations without even having to open their mouths. When they are taken to visit the leader's parents again, their acting gets so real and intense, the leader finds herself needing to cut in and stop them from making out in front of her family. They're so happy together that they decide to escape to the city next time the hotel's hunters come around, that way everyone will think they've been captured. However, the leader finds out about their plans when someone brings her short-sighted woman's diary and decides to stop them. She takes David to a special spot so he can dig his grave, and when he's done digging and lies down to test it, she tells him to cover himself with soil, including his face, so it doesn't get eaten by dogs. Afterward, she and another loner take short-sighted woman to the city to get eye correction surgery, which short-sighted woman is very unsure about. The leader convinces her to stay, but when it's finally time for the surgery, the doctor blinds her instead of fixing her, just as the leader had paid him to do. When they make it back to the woods, blind woman threatens them with a knife for blinding her. The leader puts the other loner in front of her as a shield and keeps on talking as if she was the one getting hurt, making blind woman believe it's the leader that gets stabbed when she comes closer to attack. The leader even falls to the floor and makes dying noises when the other woman does, but after blind woman checks on the other body, she stands up again and orders her to calm down or she'll abandon her there to get lost. A few hours later, blind woman meets with David so they can finish planning their escape. At first, she tries to pretend she can still see, but she can't keep up the secret for long and quickly confesses the truth, David replies they'll figure something out. From then on, he starts asking her questions so they can find another thing in common, to no avail. They'll also start playing a game where he brings her things, and she has to touch them to guess what they are, David lets her win even when she guesses wrong. When he asks for a kiss, though, blind woman tells him they can't do that anymore, which upsets him and causes him to leave. They didn't see each other for a few days after that. When David finally goes to her again he has a plan, which he explains by describing the gestures he would use from their secret language. Blind woman is shocked to hear this and asks him if he's sure he can do that, David says he is. The next morning, David surprises the leader from behind and knocks her out before tying her up and leaving her in his grave, where she's found and eaten by some wild dogs. Meanwhile, David and blind woman change into nice clothes, escape the forest, and take the road, hiding when the hotel's bus full of hunters drives by. They make it safely to the city and enter a restaurant, where David asks blind woman to show him various parts of her body, before asking the waiter for a fork and a knife. The movie ends with David taking the knife with him to the bathroom, where he gets ready to stab his eyes, while blind woman waits at the table. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, and leave a like to help the channel out.